Hello and welcome back to How to Build Software Without Coding. I'm Mr. Hackathon. I show you how to build software without coding. And in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to integrate GPT-3 and Adala. One of the reasons you would want to integrate GPT-3 and Adala is if you want to create a native application that leverages the latest AI technology. Adala is one of the easiest no code native application builders you can see people if we scroll down people are building uh real estate apps they're building management apps they're building all kind of apps and they have great templates on there to give you a preview of the kind of thing we're going to be building it's going to have a very simple input generate and here i built an app that generates monetization ideas. So you say what you like, hey, I like cleaning sneakers or cleaning trainers, and it gives you ideas for how to monetize that. To get started, what I want you to do is visit OpenAI and create an account. So if we actually go back and open OpenAI, you want to create an account with OpenAI. And what we're going to do here is we are going to first test the type of application we want to create. So I'm going to visit a playground in OpenAI and I'm going to test my I'm going to test my prompt. This is the input that you're going to give OpenAI. And I'm going to say write monetization ideas for and then there's going to be a user input, which is this variable, this last bit that I'm going to put, which here I might put watching sci-fi films. And so I'm going to click submit. And here it generates monetizations, monetization ideas for watching sci-fi films. What we can see here, which will, which is what we will need, is we'll need this view code and we are not we don't actually need the code but we need to understand the type of uh how the request is structured i often jump to postman which you can see here and postman is a tool for testing apis they, i'm not gonna i'm not going to go into detail about testing apis but this is where i test my apis and you can see how it's constructed uh, my API request is very similar to how it's constructed here, almost the same. So you can see the model prompt, temperature, max tokens. That's also what I have here when I tested my API. The next thing we want to do is to log in to Ordala and you're going to create a new project. So we're going to head over to this top, top menu here and click create a new app and select native mobile app. It gives us an opportunity to use some of the templates, but we're going to click blank and then click next. And then we're going to give it a name. I'm going to say open AI tutorial, click create. And immediately it gives us our sign in and sign up and login screen by default makes user authentication really, really easy. What we can see on the left here is the menu bar where we can add components. We can see all the components we want to add here. We can change the branding. As you can see, it's green and you can't actually see any yellow, but it's green and yellow. We can adjust the screens. We can adjust the database. We can adjust the settings and you can actually see here in publish that you can adjust the settings for the progressive web app, but you can also publish it to the App Store and the Google Play Store. And you can also see analytics and more. What we're going to do to get started is we are going to use the text input and put the text input there. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And then what we want to do is I'm going to edit the style and rather than center in the text, I'm just going to say, hey, this is a multi-line text so let's see if we can find this multi-line text here so it's just going to create multiple lines if the user writes a lot of text then what we want to do is add a button so we can just drag and drop our button there 
and I'm going to change the text of the button to generate. Next, what we want to do is to display our data like we have displayed here. And to do that, we're going to use a list component. So we're going to grab the components, type list, go to custom list, and just place the custom list there. Just give it some space. And here we have to map the list to some data, but we haven't created our database to actually store our results. So we have users, but we don't have a place to store our results. So we're going to create a table called results. And in that table, we have an input. We have an output. We also have a connection to users. So we want to show the user they're given um, data. And so what we want to do is go to relationship to users, relationship users, and we have to select the data relationship or the type of entity relationship it is. So a user can have multiple results. A result only belongs to wrong user. That sounds about right. That's what we actually want to use. So we've done that, and now this is connected to user. And what you can actually see if you go to users is created a connection to results. So there's going to be a list of results under a given user. What we want to do next is to change this list and map it to results. And you can see it's opened some additional options. I am going to sort this, and I'm going to say, do the newest to oldest. And I'm going to give it a max number of items because I only want to show the most recent result that was generated. So I'm going to select one. So now it will only show one result. The next thing I want to do is to map this text to results in the database. So what I'm going to do is map this to current result output and map the subtitle to current result created date. The next thing I want to do is actually introduce the logic. And to do that, I'm going to click on my button, click on add action, and then I want to create a custom action. I want to create a new custom action, and I'm going to name this. So I'm going to name this Open AI Tutorial. And we're going to select Create. Here is where it gets really interesting. So what we want to do here is if I actually go back, you can see a URL here that we want to use, but the actual full URL is something like that. So I'm going to paste my API base URL, which looks like this. I am going to put a method, which is post. I'm going to go to add item and put text. And this add item bit is just to test the response. So the name's not, not that big a deal, but I am going to say clean in shoes as an example value. You'll see, you see how this gets utilized a little bit later. I do want to add, add a header. So the header is going to be using my API key. And to grab my API key, what I do is I go to personal, go to view API keys. It opens this up. And then what I want to do is click new secret key. It's going to generate a new key. I just copy that. And then what I do is come back here and I paste it right here. But in this case, I want to put bearer before the SK. So just to, just to show you again, I want to put barrel for the SK. You don't want to show people your API keys. I'm doing this just for the tutorial. I'm going to delete my API key after this tutorial. The next thing you want to do is to give it a body. So what I am going to do is head over here. So you can use it from here. I'm going to use it from my postman. And I'm going to copy so your body should look something like this. You have 
somewhere where your prompt is going to go. You have temperature, max tokens. I'm probably going to increase that limit to maybe about 2,000. You have all this, all these other details. And what we want to do here when we was testing in the playground, we gave it a prompt here. And this is my static prompt, my proprietary prompt. I'm going to put that here. And then what I'm going to do is allow the user input to be that. So what we have now is our API request completely structured. I'm going to hit run test request and it's going to test this now. And you can see it's giving me back the response and here in choices.txt is giving me what I need. If I hit save custom action. So here is save my custom action or it saved the, the structure of the request. But I need to under this action, I need to map it to this box or this input box. And what I need to do is go to other components and input. And now that's mapped. So right now, if I hit generate, it's going to send a request. We're going to get a response. But what I want it to do is to actually update my user database. So I'm going to add another action, select create result. And then what I want to do is map the input to the input, the output to OpenAI tutorial choices text, and then the user to the current logged in user. And so we have the basis for our application. What we, the last thing we want to do, we do want to, the user to only show the user their results. So we're going to add a custom filter and where the user's email is equal to the current logged in user's email. So that should be fine now. Now we can pre preview this application. So I'm going to sign up. I've signed up and obviously we have no data in our database. And so what I'm going to do is type a, a business. Uh, let's just think about this. And I did actually make a mistake here. So I put right monetize ideas for watching sci-fi films. It said write, write monetize ideas for and then let the user type in their whole input there, but we'll adjust that in a minute. We'll just see if this works. Let's say uh, thriller movies, and we're gonna hit generate. And we can see it has generated our result. So it's given us ideas for monetization ideas for watching thriller movies. And we did want to make a change. So we're going to go ahead and change this request. We're going to go back, edit right here. We're going to go through and we're going to remove that watching, run the request again. And so that's good, say custom action. And now we have it how we want to have it. I do want to make a note, if we jump back into our app, I do want to make a note, it only shows one result. Even though the user may have multiple results, that's because on my list, I set the maximum number of items to display on the list as one. And I sorted it to be the newest to oldest. So it's only gonna show the newest result in this particular application. This is a very short tutorial on how to create an AI application with Odalo. From here, if you wanted to, you could upload to the Google Play Store, you could upload to the App Store, or you could keep it as a progressive web app. But here you have your AI 
application. <clears throat> if there are any questions, don't be afraid to write them in the comment section or reach out to me on social media. <clears throat>